So can you pay your child to take care of you? Hi, I'm Claire Linkton Yanowitz at the Yanowitz Law Firm, where we help families protect what matters most. And today I'm going to talk to you about when a lot of times our clients end up in a situation where, you know, they have a child who's helping them with all sorts of things. They're taking them to medical appointments. They're helping them get groceries. They are driving them places. And so sometimes um, we get asked the question, you know, I really want to pay my child for helping me. And so I wanted to create a video about different considerations to think about before paying someone uh, to take care of you. So a first, a question that you, you have to kind of get right in your mind is, is this payment or taking care of you or are you making a gift? And sometimes that distinction is a little bit murky with family members. So paying someone to take care of you is, would be classified under employment, okay? And if you're employing your child to take care of you, um, that is perfectly fine. You can have a caregiver agreement in place. So this is actually a written employment contract indicating, you know, what they're doing, what you're paying them, you know, how much they're working, you know, just like any sort of employment would kind of lay out what is the bounds of the employment. And what's really important, if it is employment, is that the payments are regular. That doesn't mean you give someone a chunk of money every six months. That's not employment. Nobody works for an employer that pays them every six months. That it is, you know, it isn't arbitrary. Okay, I gave you you know, $1,000 here, you're actually like keeping track of time, what they're doing, that sort of thing. And so sometimes people will use this concept of a caregiver agreement when they are, um, you know, thinking that maybe I might need to apply for medical assistance in the future. And medical assistance, there can be issues with qualifying for medical assistance if you make gifts to your children. But if, if you're not making a gift, you're, you're paying your children to do a certain task for you, it's not necessarily considered a gift. And, and if you are in a situation where you have questions about this, it's important to speak to an attorney, not, not do it yourself. But this video is to just kind of talk to you generally about how this works. So people get this caregiver agreement in place to pay their children to, to do tasks. And those children must pay income taxes on the money that they receive as a result of that caregiver agreement. It's employment, so they're paying income on it. And something to know, this has come up to me multiple times. Well, you know, Tommy was helping mom out. He got all this money, so he should get less at death. No, that employer agreement, that caregiver agreement, it doesn't affect what he's going to get at death. It's not like he got money up front and he's going to get a smaller share at death, you actually have to modify your will or trust if, if you want to give them less at your death because you gave them more during your lifetime. Okay. So that's something to consider. Now, some people might say, you know, I do not want this to be employment. I don't want them to pay income taxes on it. Um, you know, I don't want to do payments to them every two weeks. I want this to be a gift. I'm just going to give my kid a gift. Um, and if you are giving them a gift, some things to consider is that if, if the amount you're giving is larger, um, then um, you might need uh, to fill out uh, a gift tax return. So basically the amount that triggers uh, having to file a gift tax return is if you give your child or whoever taking care of you more than $17,000 in a particular year, then you may have to file a gift tax return. So that is something to keep in mind um, so if you make gifts, larger gifts in 2023, for example, then in the first quarter before April 15th of 2024, you've got to file this gift tax return. It's a separate return uh, from your income tax return. So it, it's called Form 709. 
And, you know, it's just important to keep in mind that if you are making a gift and then you need to qualify for medical assistance within, you know, five years of making that gift, that that gift might muck up your ability to qualify for medical assistance when you need it. So that is, that's very important. Now, sometimes people say, you know, I don't want to deal with this employment, this gift situation. I'm just going to give them a bit more money at death. You know, I've had clients where, you know, mom and dad move in with their children and their children take care of them a lot. And mom and dad want to give that particular child that they lived with um, later on in their life a little bit more. You know, they added an addition to their home so that we could live with them. And they took care of us more than our other children. So as a result, um, they may account for at death giving that child a bit extra. Well, uh, thank you so much for listening. If you want to learn more about wills, trust, and probate, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're constantly uploading new videos to the channel. Um, So if you subscribe, you will be notified every time we upload more videos. Thanks so much and have a great day.